Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12, where I continue the New Glenn Applications program, where I use Blue Origin's New Glenn first stage, well, possibly the second stage as well, for various things. And in a previous video, I had taken the New Glenn first stage and used it as boosters for the space shuttle, replacing the space shuttle's four segment boosters, the solid rocket boosters. And with that, we got 70 tons to low Earth orbit, which is a great improvement on the space shuttle's regular 25 to 28 tons. It never actually carried 25. Uh, its heaviest payload was not 25 tons. That was the Chandra X-ray telescope, which was just under that. But yeah, that was a huge improvement on that, a factor of three. Uh, but there was a problem. The external tank looked really weird between the two New Glenn boosters because the external tank is shorter than the two New Glenn boosters. And so I vowed to make an uh, adjustment to that. And this is that adjustment. So instead of having the regular external tank in the center, we have instead basically something identical to the first stages of New Glenn, uh, except in this case, I am f uh, these did not have the nose cones filled. Uh, this does have the nose cone filled with oxygen. So, and of course, the actual propellant inside this is hydrogen and oxygen, not methane and oxygen, which is what the New Glenn from Blue Origin actually has. And there might need to be some changes for it to be hydrogen and oxygen, but we'll just pass on that for now. I've uh, made sure that's the correct amount, and it so happens that it, it, with these seven meter tanks in the center, you get about the right amount when it's this length for fueling the uh, space shuttle's main engines, the RS-25s over here. So it ends up being about the right burn time, and so that's a positive. And as far as whether we need the orange foam, the infamous orange foam on the external tank, well, whatever they make the upper stage of New Glenn out of, that seems to be okay for hydrogen and oxygen. So presumably they can just use whatever that, that tankage is for this purpose, though we'll have to see. I assume they're not going to cover the upper stage with orange foam. But anyway, so we have this arrangement. Let's see if it can do the same job. I expect it will, uh, but this is a different shape. And I don't know if that external tank had special properties or something. It was lighter. Uh, we'll give it that. It's only a little bit lighter though. This is just a little bit heavier. It is more like the original version of the external tank. It's about that heavy. So when it comes to sizing things, a bigger diameter helps when it comes to the surface area to volume ratio. And surface area is what gives you the extra mass. So this hurts a little bit as far as the mass is concerned, but not too badly. All right, here's how it looks on pad 39A as we have it, though I've got the shuttle a little bit low right now, it looks like, but that will not hurt the general situation. And off we go, carrying 70 tons again of avgas. Well, I don't need the UI up. And we will reserve the fuel in the New Glenn boosters, of course, for their eventual descent. They are missing the lower wing pieces, whatever you want to call them. So that will have to be taken into account, but I don't think that's a huge deal. They'd have to be put in a skew compared to the logo, though, just so that they don't hit the shuttle's wings, probably one here and one back there. We'll work on that, but I don't even know the functionality of them right now until I see it in action. Okay, and through the clouds. 
So I've decided to call this the Trident Rocket for obvious reasons. Now it's not three identical cores by any means, but it looks the part. Alright, I'll show you the information. I don't want to deprive you of all the numbers flashing by. Okay, off go the boosters. And let's just... Oop. Oh, we can't switch them? Oh, they really need controllers in there. But anyway, at three minutes is when the boosters decouple, and I think there's plenty of extra in those. Especially since it's just a drone ship landing, not uh, landing at the launch site. But I, I should probably get the controllers in there to check that out. So I'll, I'll do one more launch and I'm surprised it doesn't have, I'm sure it does have controllers but for some reason uh, Realism Overall doesn't like the controllers. I don't know what the deal is. Something between versions has gotten certain controllers haywire. You can see one change I can make. Hopefully that'll help. And rolling over. Very, very white tank instead of orange tank. Sort of a throwback sort of situation, except the original shuttle tank was cream colored. It's quite tight for orbit right now, but that's why we have to test it. Ah, uh, we didn't quite make it. We didn't make it. We fell a bit short. Well, I think I'm gonna need to tweak how much it has, but I also want to make sure that the boosters have cores. So, or working cores. So, I'm going to restart the whole game and get that fixed. And yeah, I'll, I think we can do with a little bit more fuel in the center. I've underutilized these tanks just a little bit. So, maybe we can work on that but underutilizing it was sort of like if there wasn't a common bulkhead between the hydrogen and oxygen which in the space shuttle case there wasn't I don't think I underutilized that much um, we're only down to 90% on that one and 92% up here so yeah not that much room otherwise this is 97% and we're even using the little bit at the bottom but maybe we can extend this tank a little bit more Total burn time then for the three engines on the shuttle will be 8 minutes and 40 seconds there, 41 seconds. Okay, with adjustments made, let me try this again. vigorous liftoff. We could underfuel the boosters in order to have a more vigorous liftoff, but then we lose payload capacity, potentially. Maybe not. Maybe a higher thrust to weight ratio initially would help. But right now it's configured like the actual new Glenn first stage. And the problem is that the shuttle zone fuel is heavier than new Glenn's payload plus upper stage. Okay, through the clouds. Okay, booster set. Let's check. Well, okay, no, don't do anything more. 2,941 to land. 2,941. I think that should be enough. That should be enough to slow it down so it doesn't get overheated as well as to land. I think that's fair to say. Considering we're only going 2,500, it'll be drag. So it could kill all 2,500 and still have 400. Okay, we are rolling around. You sum up the orbit plus the delta V. It's just about 7,900. 7, so we're tight. 
the OMS engines could make up for that, but they're pushing also the 70 ton weight in there, or mass in there. So, it's a lot. Okay, but the decoupler is not in the right place, so that's not great. Okay, we did get to proper external tank separation. Okay, OMS engine burn. All right, we are in orbit, and as far as the remaining Delta V is concerned, 396 is fine. Uh, well, okay, it's not telling the truth. <laughs> okay, 209 with the payload, but hopefully we'd get rid of the payload and then get back to 300 or whatever. But yeah, uh, so here we've got 154 tons without the payload, 84 tons. So that's 70 tons of payload. And then the rest is fuel or consumables. So there we have it. The shuttle with the Trident version of the New Glenn system kind of thing. And maybe we should put it to use, I don't know. I mean, I mean in Kerbal, obviously, in real life, it's a gone case. But, uh, you know, we could maybe put together missions with the shuttle using this. It's not a hopeless thing. So I'll think about that. Anyway, well... With the shuttle up here, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.